slowly rotating at the edge of deep space, 1,000 kilometers beyond the atmosphere of 21st century Earth, is the Arthur C. Clarke Astronomical Observatory, Star Lab. Here, Star Lab Research Director, Maura Cassidy, along with scientists and technicians of the International Space Authority, watch over the countless suns, planets, and star systems that fill the universe. This week, space exploration team captains John Graydon and Buddy Griff are hurled from the outer boundaries of space into the subatomic light and shadow of a world within a world as the Infinity Factor Part 1 embraces the threshold of the unknown on Alien World. Astrophysicist Tom Liu Ping has been performing experimental tests in supralight travel, moving at velocities beyond the speed of light. The final step in a series of tests is now at hand. A specially modified ISA Delta Series craft, the Hyperion, will be piloted by John Graydon and Buddy Griff at speeds traveled before only by an infinity of light. Tom Ruping aboard the Hyperion. This is Star Lab. Go ahead, Hyperion. I just arrested the Timian 3, a little behind schedule. Jerry, I've got a revised ETA. Any problem, Tom? No problem. It's just a delay in getting launch clearance. Uh, what's your new ETA, Tom? 15 minutes, 29 seconds. Roger. I copy 15 plus 29er. Your docking orbit insertion coordinates are 614 at subvector alpha, docking bay 3. Star Lab, clear. Roger, Star Lab. Hyperion, clear. When did Tom Luping arrive, Maura? He got in at 0300, John. He was late leaving Timmy and 3. That's why we rescheduled the briefing. Here's his room. He should be ready by now. Oh, Tom, excuse us. I, I really didn't realize that you... <laughs> it's okay. Come on in, Mona. I was just finishing my Tai Chi exercises. Oh. Ah, Captain Graydon. So good to meet you in person after all the visual communication. Yes, hello, Tom. Nice to see you. Uh, tai Chi, huh? Mm -hmm. Sort of looks like slow-motion karate. <laughs> yes. Actually, it's more meditation than martial art. Well, keeping in shape out here is a good idea. I do a little Hatha yoga myself. Oh, very good, Mora. Very good. Well, what's our program? I understand the briefing. What's the schedule? Yes, uh, we're meeting at 1300 hours in room two on Level A Conference Center. All right. I'll meet you there in a few minutes. Now, this diagram on screen six shows the final modifications we've made on the Hyperion's drive system. Well, it looks like you've practically rebuilt the entire Delta Series propulsion system. Yes, that's right, buddy. But the key to super right velocity is the ion drive we've installed just behind the Starsmith Parsec accelerator. What effect will super light warp through have on our communication systems? In my preliminary tests, I experienced plasma sheath buildup that caused a temporary communications blackout. Is there any way we can avoid the blackout? No. But even though our telemetry signals will be delayed, when we reach super light speed, you'll be able to monitor our shadow image on the screen. But remember, the scanning brief will show where we were, not where we are. At warp speed, we'll actually surpass the frequency of light. Any final questions? No. No, let's go. Okay. Buddy, John, let's get our gear and prepare to launch. Starlab control to Hyperion. This is the Hyperion. Go ahead, Maura. Mycroft confirms your calculation for reaching super light critical at vector 098. 098. 
Roger. Thanks, Maura. Good luck with the test, and uh, try not to lose touch. Don't worry. We won't, Maura. Okay, buddy. Let's do it. Interface all computer functions. We have a positive decoder interlock on all data terminals. Manual launch functions are canceled. Real-time launch status, 15 seconds and counting. Okay, Hyperion, you're cleared for launch. Roger, Starlab. Okay, let's see what this baby can do. After months of planning and experimenting on Timian 3, astrophysicist Tom Liu Ping arrives at Star Lab in preparation for the final phase of tests into supra light speed travel. Assisting in the tests and piloting the modified Delta Series spacecraft Hyperion are Captains John Graydon and Buddy Griff. As the experimental vessel jets away from Star Lab, research director Mara Cassidy prepares the monitoring procedure that will track the Hyperion's telemetry and progress during the multiple light speed flight. Oh, oh hi, Mara. Hi, Jerry. How's it going? Well, they've made a couple of orbits at light speed one to check the systems. We're monitoring them on screen four. Dr. Cassidy, uh, this is Barbara, spectral analysis. Our monitoring is beginning to show telemetry distortion coming back from the Hyperion. What's their position, Barbara? We're tracking them in final orbit prior to the super light entry at subvector 096. Okay, thanks, Barbara. Jerry, open a channel to the Hyperion. This is Star Lab to Hyperion. Over. This is the Hyperion Star Lab. Jerry, I can barely reach you. Roger. Hold on a minute, John. How's the signal now, John? Any better? No, you're still breaking up, Jerry. Tom, how's the ion drive functioning? He's a great one. In fact, he's wrong. I told you to be in three watches. We're going to make a good thing. 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 We'll recheck the monitor before we go. Super right. Jerry, can't you do anything about the transmission? I don't know where all the hash is coming from, but there's some kind of interference. But the best we can do is keep the shadow blip on the screen. All right. Well, that won't help us much communications-wise. Dr. Cassidy, Barbara again. The mass proximity indicator registers a radical shift in the molecular density level of the Hyperion's hull. Start an MPI printout recording, Barbara. Mora, the Hyperion shadow blip has just disappeared from the screen. And they've vanished from all our tracking instruments. Jeez, what kind of light show was that? Scanners indicate we've walked through some kind of photon barrier. Damage report, buddy. Well, the surge buffers between the ion drive and the parsec accelerator have shifted 110 degrees out of phase. And we've got heavy vibration and thermal overload on engine number two. Reduce power, buddy. Correct to a pitch of 3-1-2. And fire yaw thruster with a 0.5 vertical correction. Let's see if we can stabilize. All right, Skip. She's coming around, Skip. Where the devil are we? Let me check the translocator beacon. That's pretty strange. What is it, buddy? Well, the beacon draws a blank. And celestial guidance doesn't respond either. It's as if we were in completely uncharted space. Try a long-range scan. I don't think that would be necessary. You'll find an Earth atmosphere planet at Vector 659 Mark 5. Where did you come up with those coordinates? I... I can't tell you more than that. Trust me. Program the coordinates and you'll see. Listen, Tom. If you know something we don't, you'd better come up with it right now. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. Tom, out with it. Yeah, come on, man. All right. About six months ago, I made breakthrough in my experiments. What kind of a breakthrough? I discovered a parallel universe during my first super-right walk-through test in Delta V. Oh, terrific. Is that where we are now? Yes. What about the planet you just mentioned? 
is a water world called Asakusha. The people of the planet live on two islands. I've made contact with one of the islands called Adusa. What I found was a world out of balance. Out of balance? What do you mean? Uh, the Sakushans had an ion generator that kept the people of the planet in balance, physically and emotionally. They regarded this, this generator as some kind of holy shrine. It's a two-piece interlocking cylinder uh, called the altar of light and dark. So what caused the imbalance? Uh, the people from the other island, Kudor, broke into the shrine two years ago and stole half of the altar. As a result, the ion level of the atmosphere has shifted. This shift caused the people of Adusa to become weak and passive, while those of Kudor become strong and aggressive. How did you get involved? Why did you get involved? It was my intention to return to the planet after we had completed these tests and leave my ion generator with the people of Adusa so they could restore their physical and emotional balance. But now that the generator seems to have malfunctioned, I don't know what to do. Jerry, start cross-checking the Hyperion's last known coordinates from the MPI graph. Okay, Mora. Uh, Starland, this is Echo Leader. Roger, Echo Leader. Go ahead. No debris, no sign of wreckage. No, apparently she didn't break up. Uh, there's nothing here. All right, Echo Leader, thanks. Return to base. Uh, Roger, Starlab, Echo Leader on the return. No. Starlab, clear. What could have happened to them? Even at light speed, spacecraft don't just disappear. Buddy, how's number two engine holding up? Uh, thermal overload is critical, Skip. Okay, shut it down. We're gonna have to put her in the water. Okay, Skip. We're on descent. A thousand meters to impact. Five hundred meters. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Okay, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I'll be okay. Just give me a couple of minutes. I wonder if the ship sustained any serious damage. I think we're okay. The flotation collar inflated on impact. I don't see any structural damage. Open the hatch, Tom. Let's see where we are. Hmm. You see anything? Yes. A small boat approaching. It's Ready Kami and Rod Goncho. Friendlies, I hope. <laughs> yes, they're the ones from Medusa I told you about. Ready, coming. Blue King, you did come back. Thank God you found us, and not the raiders of Kudor. You brought others. Yes, Rod Gancho. This uh, here is John Graydon. Hello. Uh, and uh, Buddy Griff. Pleased to meet you. Uh, 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 you. You come with us. We take you to Adusa. Why did the people from Kodor steal the beacon device from the sacred altar? Ah, uh, warlord Hiko sought to gain control over the two islands. To him, possession of the altar represented ultimate power. But he did not realize the far-reaching effect this would have. With each new tide, his people grew more hostile and aggressive. That is why the two halves of the shrine must be restored. If not, all the people on Sukusha will eventually die because of this imbalance. Will you help us with this task? Buddy, what do you think? Well... We're here. We might as well see what we can do. All right, then. Looks like we're going to Kodor. Where is Kodor? It is 
26 miles across the sea. Ah, the four preps of 1958. <laughs> what does he mean? Uh, never mind. It's just Buddy's way of breaking the tension. Orbiting above the emerald green water world of Sakusha, the Hyperion develops an engine malfunction, forcing John Graydon to ditch the ship in the sea. Ten minutes later, John, Buddy, and Tommy Lu Ping are rescued and taken to the nearby island of Adusa. Here, Lady Kami and Lord Gunsho convince them to help Adusa recover a sacred altar from the nearby enemy island of Kodor. Meanwhile, on Kodor, Fleet Officer Sora enters the Imperial Throne Room with a message for Heiko, Kodor's ruling warlord. Ah, oh, Lord Heiko, alien skyship fallen waters near Atusa. Oh, skyship? Oh, come now, Sora. You know that such things exist only in the legend. Oh, perhaps you have had a vision. Then it is vision I not see alone. Every watchtower on windward side of Kodor see also. Shared visions are not uncommon, Sora. Hey? How are you? Have you consulted the oracle for an explanation of this, this phenomenon? I need not consult oracle, my lord. I need only consult telescope. Sky ships still float in oh, waters, no, Miratusa. No. Not a possible. Step to window, my lord. You see. Here. Take telescope. How oh, they do it, Asora. My lord? Gansho and the Red Kami. How is it that they have the power to call the sky gods into their service? How I should know, Lord Heiko. Oh, do you mean how I should know? You better find out! I want to contact our spies on Atusa. Hey. I want to know who those intruders are. Hey, hey. And I want to know before night tide. Hey, Lord Heiko! Mora must be going crazy wondering what's happened to us. Yeah. Dear Mora, we're somewhere in a parallel universe. The weather is overcast, and so are we. Your pals, Buddy and John. P.S. Help. Uh, where's the post office, Gunshaw? I want to get this off right away. Uh, what is your friend talking about, Tom? Uh, he's expressing dissatisfaction with our circumstances. Uh -huh. Can you blame him? No, I... I suppose not. Uh, look, Tom, we know that you know that you should have told us about all this before the Hyperion took off. Mm. So we're not going to get too upset right now. Uh, but when we get back to Star Lab, if we ever do, you'd better be prepared to run for your life. All right? <laughs> all right. And thanks. Our ship is ready, my lord, Gunshaw. Uh, wait a minute. I don't mind sailing into the Valley of the Shadow of Death, but not in broad daylight. The sun sets quickly on twilight afternoons like these, buddy. It will be dark long before we sail. Cross your heart? My heart? No, uh, that's just Buddy's way of asking for reassurance, Cammy. Oh. Yes, buddy. Cross my heart. Uh, Tom, where's the equipment you brought ashore from the Hyperion? Over here, John. Let's see. Two laser rifles, two hard beam photon pistols, five night vision helmets, a tool pack, and a hospital kit. Okay, pass out the helmets, buddy. Right, Skip. Uh, of what use are these helmets, John? The lens on top projects a type of light that can be seen only if you look through the helmet spaceplate. Then, when we get to Kodor, we will be able to see in the dark without those in the dark seeing us. 
Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, another miracle, a rare device. You you have so many. Are they endless? I hope not, Gancho. We're going to need every miracle we can get our hands on before this is over. The night tide cycle is beginning, my lord, Gancho. Yes. Y yes, it is time we sailed. Have you told Kiatsu where we are going? Yes. He's been aboard the ship all afternoon charting our course. Who is Kiatsu? Uh, he is our helmsman and navigator, Tom. Huh. He knows these waters better than anyone on Adutha. Okay, let's get going. Sora, do you still have the message the carrier about the brother this afternoon? Hey, Lord Echo, read it to me again. But Lord Echo, I already read to you a dozen times. Please, Sora, if you wish to remain in the good graces of your imperial warlord, you will indulge him. Not a question him! Excellent point, Lord Heiko. <clears throat> My Lord Heiko, Gunshu, Kami, and three sky gods depart for Koda on night time. Course I have charted will take ship within 100 leagues of Pagoda Tower between islands. Your faithful servant, Kiatsu. Good old Kiatsu. He certainly does epitomize the word of spy, doesn't he? Hey, 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 he does indeed, my lord. Hey. And what arrangements have been made to welcome our visitors from Adusa? But, Lord Heiko... Tell me again, Sora. I love the image it conjures up. <laughs> Fifteenth Cordorian siege galley's position in semicircle round Pagoda Tower. When Gyatso sail past tower, circle will close, and Gonshu, Kami, and Sky Guards will be taken prisoner. Oh, you certainly have a way with the words, Sora. I, I thank you, Lord Heiko. Please wait. What you plan to do with them after the capture? We'll try to persuade the Sky Guards to give us the secrets of their power. Hey, and if they not easily persuaded, but then we will simply feed them to the cannibal eels. Ah, and when no trace of them remains, we will tell ourselves they never. Existed? Ah, hey. After all, Sora, life must go on. episode, astrophysicist Tom Liu Ping arrived at Star Lab for a final phase of tests in the development of superlight travel. Piloting the modified Delta Series spacecraft Hyperion and assisting in the tests are space exploration team captains John Graydon and Buddy Griff. As the experimental vessel jets away from Star Lab, Mora monitors the progress of the multiple light speed flight. Dr. Cassidy, the mass proximity indicator registers a radical shift in the molecular density level of the Hyperion pole. Start an MPI printout recording, Barbara. Mora, the Hyperion shadow blip has just disappeared from the screen. And they've vanished from all our tracking instruments. A flash of multicolored light sweeps past the Hyperion as it passes from one dimension into another and enters a parallel universe known only to Tom Liu Ping. Where the devil are we? You will find an Earth atmosphere planet at Vector 659 Mark 5. It's a water world called Sakusha. The people on the planet live on two islands. I made contact with one of the islands called Adusa. 
What I found was a world out of balance. Out of balance? What do you mean? The Secutians had an ion generator which kept the people on the planet in physical and emotional balance. It's a two-piece interlocking cylinder they call the altar of light and dark. So what caused the imbalance? The people from the other island, Kudor, stole half of the device. As a result, the ion level in the atmosphere shifted. The people on Adusa have become weak and passive, while those on Kudor have become strong and aggressive. Orbiting above the emerald green water world of Sakusha, the Hyperion suddenly develops an engine malfunction and is forced to ditch in the sea. Minutes later, John, Buddy, and Liu Ping are rescued by Tom's friends, Lady Cammy and Lord Gunsho. The three are taken to the nearby island of Adusa, where they're asked to go to Kodor and help recover the cylinder stolen from the altar of light and dark. Will you help us with this task? Buddy, what do you think? Well, we're here. We might as well see what we can do. Meanwhile, on Kodor, fleet officer Sora and ruling warlord Heiko, now aware of the plot to regain the cylinder, discuss a counter plan. Fifteen Kodorian siege galleys position in semicircle round the Pagoda Tower. When Kiatsu sail past tower, Sokka will close, and Gonshu, Kami, and Sky Guards will be taken prisoner. And now, the conclusion of the Infinity Factor on Alien Worlds. <laughs> Jerry, let me see the last telemetry printout on Hyperion. There you go, Mara. Thanks. Jerry, has all this data been cross-checked? As far as I know. Why? Well, according to this, the Hyperion is still right where it was when it disappeared. What? And then why aren't the scanners picking it up? They can't, Jerry. The MPI data indicates the Hyperion has been reduced to the size of a subatomic particle. I see no Kodorian vessels, my lord. Perhaps that helmet causes her to see things that are not there. No, Kiatsu. The helmets allow her to see through darkness. Lord Gancho! Ah, let me light this lantern so I might see. Kiatsu, what are you doing? Skipper, he's signaling those ships. Stop it. I can see many boats closing in on us. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to take them out, that's what. Skip? Right, buddy. Fire! By the gods, a lightning shooter. Good work. They break formation. Look! There's Kodor. I can see the island. Tom, Tom, take the helm. I know a cove just beyond those cliffs. As the ship carrying John, Buddy, Tom, Lord Gunshow, and Lady Kami approaches the pagoda tower between Adusa and Kodor, Kiatsu, the ship's helmsman, signals to the fleet of Kodorian siege galleys waiting in the darkness. Stop, Kiatsu! Skipper, he's signaling those ships. Stop it! <laughs> Suddenly realizing that Kiatsu is a Kodorian spy, John and Buddy knock the traitorous helmsman unconscious and engage the enemy warships with laser rifles. <laughs> Half an hour later, Fleet Officer Sora reports the outcome of the battle to Warlord Heiko. Ten ships, my Lord Heiko. 
the sky guards projected lightning bolts that destroy ten of our ships. I nearly drowned. Where are the Adusans and the sky guards now, Sora? You have uh, captured them, yes? Uh, no. No! What do you mean, no? I mean, no, we did not capture them. They escaped to the other side of the island. Escape? You had better find them, Sora. I will drown you myself. Oh, Lord Eko, you don't want to do that. Do you? Kiyotsu! Lord Heiko! Kiyotsu! What happened? When I tried to signal our ships, sky guards knocked me out. Where are they now, Kiyotsu? Uh, in a cove on the other side of island. When they went ashore, I escaped. They are after the surrender for the order of right. Uh, so, my trusty Kiyotsu, you did not fear me after all. No, no. Lord Heiko, I know the favor. Oh. Kiyotsu, tell me about the sky gods of lightning. How did they do it? Kiyotsu? Uh, how I should know, my lord, I out cold during battle. You, you missed the whole thing! That will be all, Kiyotsu. Yes, Lord Heiko. Sora, hi. you are there. Oh, you tell me about the lightning. Was it all wonderful? Oh, Lord Heiko, it was so terrible. Oh. And yet, oh. it was beautiful, too. Huh? Everywhere there was lightning. Oh. Oh. Red, orange, oh. and purple. <laughs> there was fire and smoke and the clack of wooden masts spitting, rolling and burning. It was as if... The night itself had turned to fire. Oh, Sora, such a way with the words that you have. How much further to Hiko's palace, Lord Gansho? Uh, up ahead, on the ridge. Do you know where he could keep the cylinder? Yes, in his throne room. Do you remember how to get into the palace, Lord Gensho? Yes, lady, I remember. How long has it been? He was brought here 200 moon tides ago and nearly tortured to death by Heiko's warriors as a demonstration of Kodor power. Uh, I used to come here often. Kodor was once the trade center for the two islands. Of course, that was before Lord Haeckel became so obsessed. Yes. But we do have one advantage. Haeckel must certainly know by now that we are in the company of Sky Gods. Everyone on Tsukusha fears the Sky God legends. Even Haeckel. Oh, I'm sure we can make that work for us. What do you mean, buddy? We'll use our lasers to make them dance a little. I mean, we don't want to hurt them. Ah... Uh, it is good you do not wish to harm anyone. We also believe this to be right. To hear you speak makes me feel for the first time since the theft of the cylinder that all is not lost. Don't worry, Gansho. We'll get your cylinder back. And I will do my best to understand the manner in which to restore the altar. But I will need your help, Lord Gansho. Uh, yes, Don. Uh, can you tell me if there are any insignias, markings, colors, or anything like that which connect the two halves of the altar? Uh, yes. The markings on the two halves of each disc fit together to form the law of the word symbol. Uh, stop a moment, huh? Just a moment. Uh, please show me the symbol. Here, draw it for me on the ground. Oh, uh, yes. Circle, of course, the infinity factor. My Lord Heiko, Sky Gods Gunsho and Lady Kami and their palace. What shall we do? What shall we do? I... We should call the gods, you idiot. 
God! Lord Hakon! God, where are they? Tell them what Lord Hakon! Where are my gods? I already call guards, my oh. lord. Oh. They ran away, frightened by sky guards, lightning shot us. Run? I, my God! Run away! Hey, hey! Sora, Sora, quickly! The cylinder! Take it! Lord Hakon! Lord Hakon, stop! Oh, you will be killed! Oh, where, where, where? Oh, Lord the Gunshow! And the Lady Kami! Oh, we're come! Oh, we're come back to Kodor! We have come to take back the cylinder for the altar. It is a buck? That's right. Hand it over, Hakon. And if I refuse? You've seen the power of our uh, <coughs> lightning shooters on your vessels. How about we make a trade? You, Sky Gods, give me secret of your power, and uh, I return the cylinder. Huh? Lord Hako, see that vase over there? Oh, that's very beautiful, yes? It is my favorite. <coughs> oh, you! You destroy my Kotorian Pagoda Vase! You Sora! Sora! Attack! Not me, Lord Hako. Sora not want to end up like a vase. All right, Hako, that's it. Tell us where the cylinder is, now. Oh, Sora. Sky gods have us in tight spot. Please give it to them. Please. All right. All right. Oh, cylinder is over there. Behind Katan. Yes, yes, it is here. Oh. Yes, and in Lord Gunshaw. Oh, Lord Gunshaw. All right, everyone, come on. It's nearly daylight. Let's head back to the boat and set sail for the shrine. Confronted at last by what Hako believes to be sky gods, John, Buddy, and Tom Liu Ping convince him to surrender the cylinder, which will restore Sakusha's ion generator. Meanwhile, Commissioner White arrives on Star Lab to confer with Mora about the mysterious disappearance of the Hyperion. There's a strong possibility that whatever happened to them isn't alien to Tom Lu Ping at all. What do you mean? As soon as we heard about the Hyperion's disappearance, we pulled all of Tom's research tapes and retraced his experiments. We discovered through the fuel inventories that he'd taken some earlier test flights that no one knew about. Well, how does this tie in with his research? Well, from what we could decipher, he discovered some kind of parallel universe. There's also an emotional involvement. We found his diary. Personal motivation? Yes. He intended to return to this sphere of existence all along. represent the entire story of Sakusha's great plan. It tells of how our world was to become one of perfect balance and wisdom. The altar was placed here to ensure that future. Lady Kami, the, Tom has restored the altar. It is working. All right. Well done, Tom. Well, I'm glad it wasn't as difficult as you expected. <laughs> it was actually quite simple. Once Rod Gunshu gave me the description of the pattern the two cylinders formed. It's a very primitive ion generator by our standards, but quite effective. How soon will the effects become noticeable, Tom? I measure the output of the ion generator as soon as it began working. I would estimate that its effect on the Sukushans will be seen shortly. Look, a ship is approaching. It's Hakeville's inferior warship. We've just enough time to reach our ship before the generator is up to full power. Okay, let's go. But remember, buddy, we don't really know what effect this generator will have on these people or on us. As John, Buddy, Tom, Cammy, and Lord Gunshow carefully make their way back to the ship, Sakusha's ancient altar of light and dark fills the air with an ionized aura, re-establishing the planet's balance. Mm. 
meanwhile, aboard Lord Hako's Imperial flagship. Ah, oh, Sora, isn't it a wonderful day for a sailboat ride? Water smooth and the wind are just right. Hey, my lord, oh. sailboat, very relaxing. <laughs> lord Hako, huh? Didn't we have something we were going to do today? Ah, hmm. oh, yes, Sora. I believe you're right. Did it have anything to do with a rod the gun show? There's a, his a vessel off the window at the side. Ah, hi, hi. It must be we were to sail with him. Shall we go alongside? By all means, Sora. By all means. Let us greet our old friend, the good and the kindly Lord of Atusa. Huh? Oh, the gun show. Ready, Kami? How are you? Excellent, Lord Heko. Excellent. Who are your three friends? They are friendly visitors from another world. Another world? You hear that, Zora? Hey? Visitors from another world? Hey. What other world around the country? Ah! Uh. Uh. Oh, uh. <laughs> what a funny name for a world. <laughs> you must bring your friends to Koda for a visit. Thank you, Lord Heiko. I'm glad to see that you're feeling better. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will look forward to that. Be seeing you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lord Heiko. Sora, what did a visitor from other world mean? Now that I'm feeling better, how have I been ill? Perhaps he was just wondering about your health. Ah, ah. Where I never felt better. So good to be feeling so good. Eh, Sora? Hey! <laughs> I could not believe how quickly Aiko changed. Yeah, he really went from a tiger to a pussycat, didn't he? A tiger to a pussycat? Buddy means he went from ferocious to gentle, Lady Kemi. I am glad Lord Hako became Pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see the author fulfill his purpose in restoring the Kudorian psychological balance. Uh, now, Lord Hako will be able to govern his island wisely, gracefully, and with great kindness. What about your skyship? Will it be able to return you to your world? What I learned about your ion generator showed me how to repair our spacecraft. We will be able to return safely, I'm sure. Will you ever return to Sakusha? There is enough in common in our hearts to make us all part of a great oneness. We too often forget one another. The emptiness is illuminated by the light of the heart. I must accept full responsibility for what I have done in our world first. Then perhaps I may return and go forth with what I have helped you create and give you greater understanding of what you have yet to create. We will always remember your presence and what you have brought to us. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lady Kami, Lord Gunshow. Goodbye, Bunny. John, so long. Uh, remember to keep clear of the ship when we lift off. All right. Uh, you have a safe journey. Lady Cammy and Lord Gunshow watched the Hyperion rocket away from the emerald green water world of Sakusha. John, Buddy, and Tom Liu Ping make ready for the critical warp back through time and space into their own universe. Uh, Buddy, let's program our coordinates for FTL reentry. Right, Skip. Uh, Tom, that circle Gunshow drew on the ground, what was that all about? This circle, John, was the missing key to all my research. I knew that by understanding what had happened on Sokusha, I would be able to understand what I had discovered. We were reduced in time and space to an infinity where balance is restored through the cohesiveness of philosophy and science together. And the moon circle on the cylinders united the two. The moon circle? Uh, yes, you see, the circle had been broken, separated, and the way the two cylinders fit together restored the circle and the balance of Sakusha. 
We're programmed for FTL re-entry at Vector 558, Mark 1, Skip. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. Laura, Commissioner White, look. The Hyperion's back on the screen. Uh, at least I think it's the Hyperion. Wow. Looks like your theory may have been well-founded, Commissioner. Yes, it looks that way, doesn't it? Hyperion to Starlab, over. All right. <laughs> it is them. <laughs> we read you, Hyperion. Welcome back. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, what's going on, a party? You might say that, yes. Are you all okay? Oh, we're fine, Laura. Where have you been? Do you know what happened? Yes, we know what happened. We're still not sure how we got there, but it was an incredible experience. We'll tell you all about it soon. Uh, Jerry, give us a docking orbit insertion. And break out the Beaujolais. We're on our way home. The Infinity Factor, Part 2, was based on a story concept by Larry Oakner and written by Lee Hansen, Jim Cook, and Ron Thompson. Our stars included Linda Gary, Chuck Olson, Bruce Philip Miller, and Corey Burton, with special guest stars Clark Warren, Larry Moss, Herb Ellis, Joe Young, and Helen Funai. Associate producer, Ron Thompson. Music director, Tom Rounds. Engineer, Stu Jacobs. Assistant to the producer, Jim Cook. Alien Worlds was created, produced, and directed by Lee Hansen. And so until next week, this is Roger Dressler inviting you to join us for our next adventure, Earthlight on Alien Worlds.